And the question that the apple tree, right? How? Yeah. So you have to how do you bend it? Because we I don't bend it. <laughs> I don't bend it. I do bending. How? Well, let me let me explain to you. You know how gravity works. <laughs> when the apples get heavy, the weight bends the branches down. It's called weight. Oh. And you know what's hilarious? Everybody hear me? This is so this is so anti-agriculture. If you notice, my trees are pruned really open, unusually open. Most fruit trees are really thick. You see how open mine are? You know why I prune my trees open? I'm pruning my trees open because I'm trying to reduce the amount of fruit I get. I'm trying to reduce the amount of fruit I get. This is not an agricultural concept. Are you getting it? And you'll see these trees are loaded with fruit. You walk all the way through, it's too much. I wish I could get less. <laughs> it's not working. I mean, this abundance can be a challenge. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's, it's totally hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so does everybody know where I live? This is Western Washington. I'm 530 feet above sea level and figs don't grow here. You follow me? Mm -hmm. But I want you to observe this tree over here with figs on it <laughs> and, and focus on the amount of figs. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not minimal and they get ripe. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. So if, if any of you live in this area and you want figs, mm -hmm. when you get to my chicken pen or even if you, on your way out, you can go to the base of this and there's all kinds of shoots coming off the ground. Mm -hmm. You can break one off, take it home, put it in the, in the ground, keep it well watered, and in three years from a stick, you'll get fruit. This is called Desert King and they get, and they, and they get right. Yeah. Figs are amazing food. If you ever look at a book that lists, lists foods according to their alkaline content, alkaline, which is really good for you, Figs at the top is 30, the yeah. next one below it is soybeans and it's 12. Figs is over the top alkalinizing, it's really major nutritious food. You know it's interesting, you know the creator who made all these wonderful foods for us, when he, when he describes what it's going to be like when we end up in the last thousand years it's all perfect, he mentions two fruits. And everyone will be under their own vine grapes and under their own fig tree. I think he's making a statement. Those fruits are really exceptionally nutritious. They're not, you know, borderline. They're really high quality. Keep being yeah. on our property. These are awesome. So that would be a wonderful They're a real addition. asset. And, and what I love about the native bees, you see honey bees aren't native. Mm -hmm. They were brought from Europe and they don't, they, they're not native here. And when my trees are blooming in April and it's cold outside, honey bees don't come outside. They got honey at home. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to come outside. But the mason bees, the hornets, the, 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 all the wild bees, they have no honey. And when my trees bloom, they're on it. But I'm going to show you here on this tour, there's something bigger than bees. Okay. And it's called grafting. What's it called? Grafting. Grafting. Oh. I'm grafting into my trees multiple varieties. And something I got this year that totally blew my mind is I had this bosque pear I've had here for decades. Bosque pear is a nice pear. And this tree has never any year borne more than six pears at the most. And some years none. I thought, you know what, this is taking up space. I'm going to graft into it varieties to produce because this is a waste. So I grafted into it last year, a little stick. This year, the Holy Spirit, he had me really focus this. I want you to notice those blooms. This thing totally bloomed out awesome. Pay attention to those blooms. And I did. That tree this year is full of fruit because I had cross-pollination in the tree. It was not 30 feet over that bees had to carry. Mm -hmm. It was in the tree. And because when the wind blew, mm -hmm. that pollination filtered all over that tree and totally worked. And I'm getting the power of putting pollination in the tree. It's mm -hmm. so much more effective than waiting on bees. And if you're paying attention to what's happening on the planet today, it's really scary. These farmers that go to school, do you know what they're doing? They're using more and more pesticides every year. Yeah. And the bee population in the world yeah. is declining at a scary rate. And what these farmers don't get, if you don't have bees, you're not going to have food. But I love the Holy Spirit. I love God. He's showing me how that if I have no bees, I'm still going to have food by cross-pollinating, grafting my trees. It's so awesome. I, just, I, I love him. He's just, he's just so above it all. <laughs> and he has such great ideas. And he just, he just puts you in a place of confidence. Like, you have nothing to fear. We got this covered. So you know how you know how they create dwarf dwarf trees? Does anybody know how dwarf trees are made? Different rootstocks? Yeah. They find a rootstock that doesn't develop a root system. And because you have a small root system, that will ensure a dwarf tree. 
okay? And always tell you what door trees you got to stake them because you have no roots to hold it. So in Psalm chapter 2, it says that God laughs. <laughs> he totally laughs at the concept of a dwarf tree. Let me demonstrate. This, this, this growth here mm -hmm. is coming up from a root. Oh. It's oh. coming from that tree that, that Nick's in front of. <laughs> 30 foot away, 30 foot away radius from that tree is a root that's saying I'm at least this far out. We don't know this is the end of it. So I want you to get the reality that dwarf trees are a joke to God. He laughs at the concept of the dwarf tree. Now I want to explain to you why I never have to water to fertilize. I want you to do this because it's huge. I want you to, 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 to push your, put your lock into this space and do a circle 360 degrees around that tree this wide out. Go around that tree all the way back and imagine the size of that root system. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. This isn't worried about getting water. When you have a root system that big, it has access to unlimited resource. I'm just telling you, man, this rocks my boat. This blows me away. Like, you got to be kidding. 30 foot radius from the trunk in 11 years, a dwarf tree. Wow. It is it is totally off the charts. It's amazing. Now you see this cool tree right here? Is this an unusual look at apple tree? <laughs> no central leader? Does it look like a Japanese bonsai? Yeah. Well, it's a Japanese tree. It's Mutsu from Japan. Mm -hmm. And you can see the branches are on the ground. I can't get them up. Because the weight's so heavy, it just takes them right down. But it produces totally great. Mm -hmm. Apples have nowhere to fall. Mm -hmm. When I always pick them up when they're ripe, they're on the ground. The wood chips, you know, is totally clean and it's really convenient. People, people come here on tours and so there's, this is the first time in my life I had to bend over to pick an apple. <laughs> I had to bend over to pick an apple. <laughs>